and Qatar has rejected a list of demands submitted by Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt, calling it neither reasonable nor actionable. This list of demands confirms that Qatar has said what Qatar has said from the beginning, that the illegal blockade has nothing to do with combating terrorism. It is about limiting Qatar's sovereignty and outsourcing its foreign policy. Political analyst Adeni Kunu joins me now in the studio to discuss this. Many thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Great. Now, when U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson um, suggested that Qatar be provided with a list of demands from these Arab um, neighbors. He, he, he asked them to do something that was reasonable and actionable. I'm sure he didn't in the life, for his life, imagine that um, this would be the outcome. All right. Um, now, and how do you describe or react to these demands? Well, in the first place, uh, it has been long in coming uh, regarding Qatar's support for terrorist organizations. And let me tell you that this particular uh, demands happened to be coming after uh, the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, visited that region. And I wanted to understand that we, we would normally have great countries of the world online. As far as the Arab region is concerned, Saudi Arabia remains a figure whose words cannot be, uh, you know, thrown away anyhow. Uh, let me give you a little bit of history regarding mm. Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Now, in the 90s, uh, particularly I think 1996, the BBC Arabic, uh, BBC Arabic was operating using Saudi Arabia satellite. Mm. And then Al Jazeera was trying very hard to come up because Al Jazeera is 21 years this year. Now, particularly November 1996 was when it started operations. At that point in time, the Saudi Arabian government wasn't happy with the ethos of BBC Arabic. And what did it do? it stopped giving it the opportunity to use its satellites for operation and that caused the cessation of operation or broadcast of BBC Arabic that gave Al Jazeera the opportunity to start a broadcasting. As a matter of fact, over 150 members of staff of BBC Gen had to join Al Jazeera which gave it its standard. So one way or the other, mm. the Saudi Arabian government helped Al Jazeera to begin because one of the 13 demands is the closure of Al Jazeera. A uh, part of the particular things written on that is to sever ties with Turkey. Uh, Turkey, do not forget, happens to be a border where many of these ISIS groups have been taken. And yeah. Saudi Arabia has never been comfortable with that. Well, let me pick up from Please your reference ahead. to yeah. BBC, li like you just mentioned. Yeah. One of the demands is for um, Al Jazeera and about four other news outlets sponsored to be, by yeah, Al Jazeera. Sponsored by, by Qatar, Qatar yeah, particularly. To be, to be shot down. Yeah. Now, um, if Al Jazeera, which is very important, is a TV station. Yeah. If you do not like propaganda from, say, CNN yeah. and BBC, will you close your airspace to American and British airlines? Well, if you look at it, they have to look at what makes it get badly hit. Only recently, there was a proposition from a major uh, Qatari airline to want to buy a stake in American, that's the biggest airline in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, about $808 billion has been proposed to obtain 10% share mm -hmm. of that airline. The reason is because if you're talking about aviation these days, it's a global business. So in any way, Qatar may benefit if the airline, because immediately you use the country's airspace. Yeah. There are certain amounts you have to pay to that country on whose soil you land. So it is about cutting off anything that will make them have any kind of financial muscle. And for the records, Qatar has the highest GDP in the, G GDP in the world. Uh, the last time I, I checked it was about $78.5 thousand dollars. That's the GDP, roughly. Yeah. Now, if you look at its population, just 2.24 million in number, it has the highest. Now, if you check the country that they don't want uh, to have it supported, that's Iran. Iran, Iran's population is about just 79.1 million. Saudi Arabia, about 31.5 million. If you come to UAE, about 9.2 million. Mm. Now, Qatar has the highest, highest. per capita in the world. Yeah. It has all the money in the world. And at the moment, the two countries that it has been told to civil ties with, which of course are Turkey and, and Iran, Iran, has been helping it with food supplies because mm. it has told, it's been told that 
All of these things we have proposed, do not forget, part of it is that for the next one year, there's going to be monthly there audit. Be audits, from the second yeah. year, quarterly, quarterly audit, audit for the next 10 years. Ten years. So yeah. if you look at all of these things, it is pretty challenging. We're going to be supervising Qatar it for is, 10 years. It, yes, it is. Now, let me ask you, Please, Qatar has been given 10 Ten, Ten days, days yeah. to comply to these um, demands. What happens, you know, what are the likely consequences if Qatar refuses to comply? Let me tell you, the alliance of Saudi Arabia, the United States of America, and of course the European Union as it were, is much more than the alliance of the Shiite Iran mm -hmm. and of course the Turkish people. Do not forget, it's the same way we started talking in this country. Permit me to refer to Nigeria. When Boko Haram started its evil, we thought it was something against Christians. But later we realized that these are some criminals and evil-minded persons who want to make the country ungovernable. So it is about Christians and Muslims aligning. So now it is about countries whose religious standpoints differ, but whose political interests remain the same. So you have a United States of America whose alliance, business and otherwise with Saudi Arabia, is as long as the establishment of that particular country. Indeed. So it is completely unthinkable to have Qatar continue to align with these people. Do not forget that Iran has certain sanctions. As a matter of fact, the caveat given to Iran is that if you must continue your relationship yeah. with Qatar, that's uh, with Qatar and Iran, then the um, Iranian Revolutionary Guards must be made to leave. If you look at it, what, it's just like having the Nigerian army in Ghana. Come on, are it, these, it, does, it doesn't have to work. these demands even realistic in scope? The point remains that you, you cannot look at what is realistic or not. You have to look at what must be done to save the world. Okay. Because if okay. you look at it, it is very strong. Don't forget when we heard that Osama bin Laden was troubling the world. When the world went to sleep, Osama bin Laden was, was tackled to death. Hmm. Now, it means that whilst the world appeared not to be looking in the side of Qatar, certain underground investigations are going to... Do not forget, if you look at ISIS... ISIS has a stake in Syria. And if you look at Syria, Syria happens to be a country that shares border with Turkey. And ISIS has used that as a gateway. Uh, if you look at Hezbollah, Hezbollah, Lebanon, Lebanon, Palestine. I mean, if you look at Islamic Brotherhood, <laughs> Egypt is there. If you look at Bahrain and UAE, you yeah, also have Al-Qaeda and all Afghanistan. These groups that um, Qatar is being accused of having... Um, Accusations, but there are findings to this effect. And let me tell you, for an Arab country to turn against its own, there are serious findings and revelations in that regard. Indeed, we, I wish we had more time to discuss this. I wish this. as well that we you should. Know, um, Adeni Ikunu, Public Affairs Analyst, many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having news. me. Thank you. Well, you're watching The World News. We'll take a quick break now and return shortly to stay with us.